Now to Norway and the story of a remarkable British expedition to the Jostedals Glacier, the biggest in Europe. The plan was to drop six parachutists onto the glacier to carry out a survey. The men were then to cross the glacier on foot and complete their journey to Lowen by shooting the rapids of the Brixdalen River. Dropping onto the glacier involved the team in one of the most hazardous parachute jumps ever attempted. The landing zone, 7,000 feet up on top of the glacier, was only 100 yards square. The team had to fall free for about 10 seconds before opening their chutes, otherwise they'd have been blown off course and over the glacier's edge. As they approached the dropping zone, the wind increased to a dangerous 20 knots. Normally, free-fall jumps are not attempted in winds over 15 knots. The first five to jump landed spot on target, but the last man was swept to within 25 yards of a precipice on the edge of the glacier. All got down safely, however, and the success of the jump showed that this might be a way of getting scientists to polar regions quickly instead of relying on the usual long overland trek. The expedition was led by a 27-year-old army captain, Sir Ranulph Fiennes, who'd been on a reconnaissance trip to the Osterdals in 1967. After gathering up their equipment and striking the British flag, the party moved off across the plateau to set up their first camp. They'd allowed themselves four hours in which to cover the first six kilometers from the landing zone but the weather worsened and the journey finally took over 11 hours. The weather on the glacier is unpredictable at the best of times. At one moment it can appear to be set fair for a long time. A few hours later, clouds may cover up all landmarks and make travelling impossible. One of the sledge teams was trapped by a sudden mist and had to spend a night out on the glacier without sleeping bags or tents in a temperature of minus 16 degrees centigrade. All of them suffered from exposure, but fortunately made a rapid recovery. Having established their base camp, the team could get down to the real scientific work of the expedition. The party included experts on glaciology, geography, geology and zoology and all had specific tasks to do. The zoologist was particularly interested in the hundreds of lemmings which were found perfectly preserved in the ice. Every four years, lemmings migrate in their thousands, most of them drowning in rivers, lakes or the sea. This one never even made it across the glacier. One of the main aims of the expedition was to carry out a ground survey of the glacier, the first time it had ever been mapped in any detail. Another task was to take core samples of the ice. From these, scientists can tell how old the ice is and whether the glacier is moving at a uniform speed at all levels down from its surface. The team also recorded how fast the glacier was flowing by hammering stakes into the ice. To their surprise, they found that markers placed one day had often been uprooted or drifted out of sight by the next. Survey parties found it hard to keep their theodolites steady as the glacier shifted beneath their feet. After carrying out all their experiments, the main party trekked 40 kilometers along an old Viking trail which brought them to the edge of the Brixdal Glacier. Here they were confronted by an almost vertical ice cliff towering 2,000 feet above Lake Lowen. Sir Ranulph admitted that this was one of the most dangerous parts of their mission. They thought they'd get down the ice face in a day, but it took them two.
Their biggest problem during the descent was negotiating the many wide crevasses. Several were crossed in this fashion using flimsy aluminium ladders. At one point, a sledge carrying miscellaneous equipment suddenly plunged through a crevasse 200 feet deep. The hauling rope had to be slashed through, sending the sledge and its contents clattering into the abyss. The team could hardly have chosen a worse time of year for the descent. The glacier's melting rate is at its peak in August, and snow bridges like this one can suddenly give way without warning. Higher up on the glacier, the team had left special markers in the ice. They plan to return in two years' time to see how far the markers have moved. The information gained may help to prove or disprove a new Danish theory that a second ice age is already underway. The last 200 feet to the lake's surface involved climbing down a rock face made treacherous by streams of water from the melting glacier. The descent over, the six men took to their tough rubber dinghies, three to each boat. They'd hauled the boats down the glacier, fully inflated to prevent them dropping into the numerous crevasses. They now faced the last dangerous stage of the expedition, 50 miles of rapids on the fast-flowing Brixdalen River. No one had ever shot these rapids before, and very little was known about how the water behaved or what the main obstacles were. To Sir Ranulph, it must have brought back memories of his famous exploration of the White Nile last year. Certainly the lively Brixdalen presented the team with almost as many headaches as the Nile. It wasn't long before the first boat hit trouble in the form of a submerged ridge on the river bed. The crew worked feverishly in the boiling foam to free their dinghy, and in the process they themselves were swept into the river. Eventually, all three managed to reach the relative safety of larger rocks in the middle of the river, apparently none the worse for their experience. Their overturned boat continued the journey without them. It was retrieved lower down river. The capsizing of the first boat had its advantages. It meant the crew could lend a helping hand to the second boat when it too came to grief in this narrow gorge. After four days of battling against the river, both crews finally made it to Lowen to set the seal of success on an expedition that combined useful scientific research with a degree of personal adventure rarely found in today's world.